guys, welcome to iDevice Central channel, I'm Joe of Now and today we're discussing of course about the iOS 10 which was finally released for the public. So this ah. is the iOS 10, it's running right now on the iPhone 5s and I'm going to show you if I navigate right here to software update, you're going to see by checking for updates it says iOS 10.0.1, your software is up to date. But I didn't update it. What's the problem then? Well, this is the exact same build as the uh, GM, the Golden Master. You probably know we talked about the Golden Master uh, back in, um, in my videos right here. In this video, which is iOS 10.0.1 GM or Golden Master Review, right here we discussed about this um, Golden Master build and we talked about everything it has and everything it brings. So, um, Speaking about the Golden Master, it actually contains only a couple of difference if you want to compare it with the iOS 10 Beta 8, which was the latest beta, and compared with the uh, public version that was released today, it is basically the same thing. So what is the problem now? Why it is an update? Well, Golden Master builds are usually the same thing that is going to be uh, presented to the public as the general public after its uh, final stage. But sometimes Golden Masters are released and during that week or that two weeks before the public is released, it actually shows up and reveals some bugs. And then they are actually um, they're actually put in a situation of creating a new IPSW in order to fix that bugs. If that thing doesn't happen and if in the Golden Master there, there are no bugs, at least no bugs that are found in that one week short uh, time, then the Golden Master is the final release. And this is the final release of the iOS 10. So if you are running the Golden Master, which was iOS 10.0.1, as you can see from here, then you cannot update because there isn't any other update. This is the iOS 10, the general public version. And I want to talk to you about the kernel of this thing. The kernel inside this iOS 10 0.0.1, it's still unencrypted and this means that we should expect a Pangu jailbreak soon. Why I say Pangu? Because Taiji was kind of inactive uh, in the last few months. Even though they say they are still interested into making jailbreaks, they didn't create anything to, um, to back up that idea and so we cannot talk about a uh, Taiji jailbreak until we see a Taiji jailbreak, of course. But Pangu has very great ideas in terms of jailbreaking, and if we remember from um, from June when the uh, iOS 10 was presented at WWDC uh, 16, they actually uh, managed to jailbreak it, and they presented the jailbreak during the, um, the event they held. And this is basically very important because we know that iOS 10 is jailbreakable. Of course, not with the same exploits that were used in the beta one, because at that time, Pangu at Mosaic demoed the uh, iOS 10.0.1, sorry, 10.0 beta one uh, jailbreak, which of course from beta one to iOS 10 final release, I guess that exploits are no longer exploitable, but of course it's at least we know it's jailbreakable and probably we should expect in a month or probably in a month and a half a jailbreak from Pangu because this is kind of their um, their schedule for jailbreaking. Now let's see what Apple is presenting on their page. If you go to apple.com and you go to iOS 10, you can see they have a very great introduction guide on this. You can also watch some demos and they actually improved a lot. You can see the, uh, the actual change log from settings, if you go to settings, you can see the change log. If you didn't update to the um, to general um, public, and you can see what they changed. Compared with iOS 9.x, is a lot of changes, and most of the changes are uh, actually created around the idea of messages application, music application, which was completely reinvented, and of course the 3D touch, which of course get a lot of improvements and a lot of functions. So what is it new? Well, there are a lot of new features, too much to talk about them in this video. I don't want to make it extremely long, 
but you can go right here and see a lot of things that are in the um, in the action actual iOS 10. Of course, most of the features and most of them are um, in the messages application, but also the operating system itself got general improvements in speed and uh, flexibility because the kernel and the root file system are no longer encrypted, which means that the uh, accelerator for the uh, encryption inside the, um, the processor of the device doesn't have to do any uh, decryptions on the boot time, which means that your phone will start pretty fast and will shut down pretty fast due to this thing. And Apple decided to do that because the kernel and the root file system itself containing the applications doesn't hold any personal information to making the, uh, the, operation, the operation of the um, unencrypted kernel um, parsing from the, uh, from the processor not to be a security flow. So you couldn't get anything better than that. I mean, your phone now starts pretty fast due to that thing, because as I say, the kernel doesn't have to be decrypted in order to start, which saves, of course, a lot of seconds. And of course, talking about the um, messages application, new emojis, and now the emojis can replace actual words. As you can see from the image, if you, for example, tap the word movies or tacos, it will be replaced with the uh, corresponding emoji. and. Actually, if you write a text and you click on the emoji icon, it will actually highlight your your text, your words that can be replaced with emojis. And you simply need to click or to tap on the word on pizza, tacos or movies, and you will get the replacement, which is kind of cool. You also have the, uh, the feature from the Apple Watch to actually send sketches directly through the messages. And of course, a lot of features, including the Siri that now has a public API, which is perfect for those who want to develop applications. This gives you the ability to actually uh, get Siri to do something, for example, to contact Lyft. As you can see from the image, it says, uh, get me a Lyft to SFO. <laughs> and actually, Lyft is a taxi application, which has nothing to do with Siri, it's a third party, but Lyft, company can now use the API in order to communicate with Siri and to embed stuff from their applications into the Siri. And not only Lyft, anybody who creates applications can get those APIs from the Apple website and use them inside their application. This is the first time this happens and Siri is available for public development from the first time, which is something great. And of course, a lot of improvements on the maps and a lot of improvements on the um, 3D touch as I say. This is the home application that gets embedded in the iOS 10 right here. And the home application basically communicates with your intelligent home. If you have, for example, Philips light bulbs or thermostats or sheds or anything like this, front door, um, locking, unlocking systems, and so on. You can communicate with them through the phone, through the application that it's embedded into the phone right here on iOS 10. How cool is that, isn't it? This is the application, but of course you need to enable iCloud in order to communicate with that. So this is basically it, guys. You can, as I said, you can watch the review I made completely for that thing. And as you can see, we should expect a Tango jailbreak soon. I cannot tell if it will be untethered and I cannot tell if it will be the same method in inquiring the um, uh, CDI impactor and including the application that needs to be signed and so on. I don't have any clue, but I can tell you that there will surely be a iOS 10 jailbreak and probably and most likely from Pangu, which made the uh, most of the jailbreaks starting with iOS 7.1.2 and till now. Of course, Taiji created the 8.4 and 8.3, if I remember well, jailbreaks, but they stopped there. Although they say they are still interested in making jailbreaks, we didn't see any release and this is basically it. But I cannot tell also if it will be compatible with 32-bit devices because the latest jailbreaks that Pangu published, including the one for 9.1 and the one for 
for 9.2 to 9.3.3 were 64-bit device only, which actually doesn't give me very much hope about 32-bit devices, but we'll live and we'll see. So this is it guys, thanks for watching. As I said, if you want to follow the uh, review, in-depth review of the iOS 10.0.1 GM, which is the actual iOS 10, it's down in the description or in the cards up there. And till the next time, do not forget to subscribe to stay updated on the jailbreak in iOS. And peace out.